OpenAI released its new feature called Projects, which is a part of 12-day rollout before Christmas. In today's session, we'll be diving deeper into Projects, aka Folders. Uh, that's what I think. It's a fancy name for folders. And we'll see how to create a project, what are the benefits of creating or using a project, and much, much more. I am really not sure if educators around the world feel overwhelmed, but currently I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed trying to keep up with all these new features and at the same time maintain the integrity or keep up my curriculum to this technology and be aware of what is being released out there. But nevertheless, we are here. My name is Bhavani Kola. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about educational tools, tips and technology. So if you don't want to miss out on all the fun or if you don't want to be overwhelmed, just make sure you subscribe so you get all the latest updates from an educator to an educator. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So here I am on the ChatGPT interface. To create a project, you will simply click on the left side and click project. And I will name this demo. Why not? Keep in mind, projects are available to Plus Pro and Teams users, and this will be rolled out to Enterprise and EDU early next year. Currently, oh, wait a minute. GPT has mentioned that projects are only available in GPT-4 and the model cannot be changed. But if we look here, currently I can change my model from 01 to 01 mini or even GPT-4 mini. But let's go ahead and stick to GPT-4.0, which has been my favorite. So once you create a project, and if you think the name doesn't resonate, you do have an option to edit the name, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. You do have an option to change the colors of your project. Let's change the color to yellow. Oh, I do, have, yeah, let's change the color to yellow. And once you're here, you do have an option to add all your files. You can add multiple files and you can add your instructions. This is the best part. You can create custom instructions for every project. And I'm going to show you a demo of how that works. So instead of creating an overarching custom instructions for all your queries, you now have an option to create custom instructions for each project. This could be beneficial for coders if you're trying to code and have one project for each project. This is much more helpful. So that's how it works. And if you want to move your previous chats into your project, all you have to do is simply click on these three ellipses and click the project you want to move this to. I'm going to click demo. And right now, my rollout pros and cons are in here. Now, let me show you something else. Okay. When I'm clicking on this little chat right here, I do not have an option to move this chat into the project. That is because this chat was created or this query was run using a GPT. So if you're calling a GPT and you are creating your chat, that chat cannot be transferred into your project. And at the same time, you cannot call any GPTs inside your projects. Let me try something at bio. No, I am not able to call any GPTs inside the project. This is what I feel right now. And if this is not true, please comment in the comment section below. Maybe I'm not looking at the right thing. Currently, the projects do offer your Canvas feature. They offer Dolly. They offer the search option and... You can change whichever model you want to, and you can add multiple files as well. So what I'm going to demo right now is my sample project here. I did upload three project files or three files, and I do have my custom instructions right here. It says deliver clean, neutral, well-supported presentation. This project that I've created is to come up with a presentation on ethics of AI. So I had to be very careful when I am customizing my custom instructions because I do want a GPT to be very neutral, not biased. So you can give a whole lot of custom instructions right here. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate something. So here is 
I'm trying to find the difference between cheap fakes and deep fakes using all the project files. So I do ask GPT, give me the difference between cheap fakes and deep fakes. And keep in mind in my custom instructions, I have mentioned to always cite the sources. So it does give me all the information when I open up. This opens up in Canvas. It does open up in Canvas. I do have an option to change and use all the features in Canvas right here, which is also a blessing. And let me go back right here. As you can see, when I asked the GPT inside the project, when I created my project and I uploaded my files and I asked GPT to give me or create a three slide presentation about cheap and deep fakes with the sources, it does cite the sources from the project files. Now, I personally feel that this is something like Google Notebook LM which I should be doing a video on, which is on my list. It kind of feels like that, but it has more capabilities to it. You can search the web, you can create images, you have the data analysis feature in this as well, which I'll be demonstrating in a minute. So not only it pulls the information and creates a presentation, but it also cites the sources for me from those project files that I have uploaded. So which is right here and now, Using the same project files, I have asked GPT to create an interactive graph. So let's create a graph using the project files, which I can simply copy and paste into my presentation, which I think is a blessing. So this does have the data analysis feature, the search feature, the canvas, and also Dolly. Now let me show you how I use this as an educator. So here is my winter semester course. Let me close the sidebar. Here is my winter semester project. I did upload my syllabus right here. Please make sure when you're uploading any of your personal files, your personal information is absolutely taken away or deleted from that particular file. I do have a generic file that talks about my class policies, dates, due dates, exams, grading criteria, and how a lockdown browser should work, where they can find the resources. A general information where students can find that information on the web as well. But this does help me to customize my outputs. And in the instructions, I said, because this is an 11-day course, I want the GPT to respond with more motivation, encouraging, and adding humor to any of my announcements is my personal touch because I do feel it's a math class. So students, you know, it's always nice to lighten up their mood. But you can put in whatever you want, like I've demonstrated in the previous one. That was a whole bunch of custom instructions. And once I have it here, I have all the information. And I said, let me just show you. I said, create a fun announcement reminding. Uh, I spelled reminding wrong. My students about the important class dates. Because it's a fast paced class, constantly reminding them probably is a good idea. And that's all I had to say. As you can see, it just adds that personal touch. It's also adding those emojis, giving a whole bunch of information about when my class is, when the drop date is, when the test one is, test two is. And it's also adding that humor saying, shake off these holiday vibes. The grand finale is almost here. You've got this. And it's also giving them a pro tip on how to take breaks, stay hydrated. So this is a I'm enjoying this projects because I don't have to constantly tell, you know, motivate my students, add humor, because I, I can give a custom instructions, but adding humor to my ethics of AI presentation might not be a good idea. Sometimes you like to have custom instructions for every project, which is right here. Now that we've done or we've taken a look, let's go ahead and um, let's say, let me say, create a fun announcement for the class about grading policy. This is all I have given and my project file is right there. Instructions are right there and let's just see what happens. Okay, it is automatically telling what the test percentage is. You tackle four tests, one test is going to be dropped, miss the test, it becomes a dropped score by default. Um, translation show up, give it a best shot, keep moving forward. Homework 30%, the top scores matter. 
It's also telling them three lower scores are dropped, bad buy, bye bye, bad days. I mean, honestly, I could not have thought about a fun way to talk about my grading policy. And here you go. And look at the pro tip. I really have to show you the pro tip. It says pro tip, no rounding grades. I don't round grades in my class. So this is no rounding grades, 89.49. That's a B. So aim for clear victories, no decimal debates. I love it. I love it. And all I have to do is simply copy and paste it in whatever LMS you're using. Um, so here, this is, I think this is really fun. If you're an educator, you can have custom projects for each class. And if you have a class where you have a students who are motivated, that could be one project. And if you have students who are not motivated, it always happens. You teach the same class and one class is doing extremely well and the other class is struggling, even though you are the instructor. So these projects could be very beneficial to streamline, to customize, to tailor, to collaborate and have everything in one place, more like a one stop shop. But this is Google Notebook LM with much, much more features. You can ask it to create a table. You know what? Let's go back here and why not say create a table format for the above information. Um, there you go. Test. This is just, I mean, I love the fun way of announcing, but I just wanted to show you that it also can create a table format. Now let's just try the data analysis feature. Create, create a bar graph. It is taking some time. There you go. It did create. Oh, I do. So data. Oh, so this is cool. I thought the interactive graphs are not available, but looks like the interactive graphs are available. I do have an option to change the colors. So this is cool. I like it. And let's just try one more. I'm going to say create an image using the above information. I'm just showing you all the features. I hope it doesn't just give me another bar graph, which would be stupid, but maybe a pie chart, but let's see. Oh, there you go. Homework 30% quizzes. Well, when it creates an image, you know, it does throw a lot of um, garbage in there. It's hallucinating. My quizzes are not 30%, but just wanted to give you an idea of all the features. So it does have a feature to make it fun. You can create tables. You have data analysis here, and you also have image generation. If you want, you can go ahead and open this in Canvas in GPT Canvas and try that out. Maybe it's time I do another video on Canvas too. But this is all I have for you today. I mean, trust me, if you're teaching multiple classes or even having multiple projects, using this project feature could be a blessing where you don't have to repeat yourself and you don't have to worry about your context bleeding into the multiple chats or even constantly updating or clearing your memory. I hope you enjoyed the session today. If you do, please make sure you like and subscribe. And if you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so. And do comment in the comment section below. What videos do you want to watch more? Because I am trying to keep up with technology and I want you to keep up with me. Until next time, ciao, happy teaching, and please do take care of yourself.